Y'all yeah, know what it is, your boy Block125 checking in from Zone 3 with the Progress Report. With the OG La La, she working, you know what's going on. Half a brick out right now. We finna drop 36 time 2 next month, so stay tuned. The Progress Report. What's going on, y'all? It's your girl Lala Shepard checking in. This is the Progress Support. I got my special guest of the evening. Introduce yourself. Block one two five, aka Dope Boy. Word. All right. So, uh, for the people who don't know, who don't follow the culture, of what's going on here in Atlanta? Who are you, and what do you do? I'm from Zone Three. I'm a CEO of One Twenty Five Records. I also an artist of my own label. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, how old are you, and how long have you been doing music? Been doing music by how many y'all been doing music by eight years, thirty six. Okay. So no, nah, let me see, two thousand about five years, five years. Five years. Okay. So, uh, what do you mean to Atlanta? What contributions have you made to the Atlanta culture that you know the everyday person might not know? I did a lot for Atlanta. Let we start them know. with the cars, we start with in the end with the music game, you know what I'm saying? Real influence on my hood, Zone 3, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? We started a record label, that 125 Records. You know, I had a couple guys coming through there. A couple of y'all you might know, Young Thug, Cash Out, Tay Man, Bank Road, Fred Montana. You know what I'm saying? A couple people like that just slide through on a daily, so we was always working. But I was on some CEO stuff at the time, so I wasn't just doing the music. I just had the studio and the record store starting to move me up. Hmm. Um, so what was it about those particular artists that spoke to you? What stood out in them artists that made you say, you know, we got to put something together? For one day with my homies and I seen like, okay, I ain't know too much about the music game at the time, but I know they were talented. Because mm -hmm. we go to the club, they play the songs, everybody just going crazy over. So I was like, I'm standing behind, I'm going to get a studio, I'm going to save them some money, I'm going to help them out mm -hmm. in that nature. You know what I'm saying? So we just had something going on from my way. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we just started the 125. Then you had a couple more other People come along and they start starting label. At first, we just jumped out of the porch and tried something. It just went bigger than what we thought. We just were playing with something at first. Hmm. Um. So, what does music mean to you personally? Money. <laughs> what else, man? I know. I mean, of course, money. You know what I mean. But what else does music? Not entertainment do for, you? for real, though. Cause some people I can reach and get on both sides of the of the streets, as I should say, on both sides of the game. Hmm. You know what I'm saying, like. In my music, if you listen to it, you'll, I say this, that, and the other, then I come back and I straighten up certain things, let the little kid know, okay, you got a choice, you can go that route. It might look good, but the consequences come with that route. So it's like, I'm giving you a choice, like, basically, you don't have to take my decision, you know, I, my route I took, but mm -hmm. I'm letting you know it just because it look good, mm -hmm. everything and all good. With us a whole lot of sleep at night, a whole lot of pain, and, you know what I'm saying? So that way I feel like. Where? Um, so what means more to you, respect in the streets or respect in the music business as a businessman? You can't have one without both. Hmm. Money, power, respect, you got all three. Mm -hmm. They go together, like, you don't respect one without the other. Hmm. So you got all three to get a certain type of respect. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't want to respect you for your money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You want to respect for your loyalty and your respect. Then, but you got to, you know, and some people, you got to have money for most mm -hmm. of the people I know got the most respect in some shit they don't have in the money. They, True. They ain't just going for that. They really have power, you feel what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. you got know, all three of my eyes, you feel what I'm saying? Right. I don't want to have no power, I ain't got no money. True. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, True. I don't want to have no respect, I ain't got no money. But mm -hmm. It don't make sense. Word. Um, so what do you consider to be a lot of money versus what some might consider play money? I rather say wealth. See, that's the difference. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you got different levels of play money. Mm -hmm. My play money might be a different level than somebody else's play money. So right. I just rather say it's the difference between rich and wealth. I rather be wealthy. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Generation of paper. It's just going to stop right here two, three years, and you don't hear about it no more. Mm. But now I rather invest. Right. Yeah. Cool. That was going to lead me into my next question. Uh, what would be some tips and advice that you would give people for invest or investing? On oh, what's going on right now? Current. Or just in general, like just speak on your experience, uh, just, you know, investing. I don't, I'm going to speak on what I invested in. I okay. invested in what made sense for me. I invested in like um, real estate one before. Mm. I invested in a car while I went before. Mm -hmm. And then I invested in like myself. You see what I'm saying? Like, I got a bid in JYO Holy Group, so I sold 
I was a broker at a car dealership. Anything can make a quick profit. That's how I look at it. I don't like the way they say it's gonna take a year before mm -hmm. you start seeing your money. So I just go and we're going. People gonna buy cars every day. People gonna buy houses every day. They gonna lease cars, whatever it may be. Something they gonna use every day. That's a good investment in my eyes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's just how I look at it. Okay. Um, so what's the most amount of money that you ever spent on a lawyer? Mm, broke it down probably like a, a little bit over a hundred thousand dollars before. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, what would be some of your advice to, you know, some of the younger guys that's in the streets right now? Trapping dead. I'm just being real, like, I don't support that. You know what I'm saying, you know, people gonna do what they want to do, but at the end of the day, it's different. Like, it's a totally different game right now. It's You got your homies telling on each other. You got the dudes mm -hmm. supposed to be in the OG. They telling. You got a nigga wearing wires. You got a nigga wearing um, with audio, video. You got a nigga taking pictures. Like, it's a different game. That's, like, easier for you to get incriminated than back in the day, like, when we probably jumped out the port. Like, you just had, okay, or, like, you got the police, they gonna pull up, they gonna jump out, run out to this and that and all the other, but now more technology, like you can't beat them, like, it ain't nowhere around it. Now they got people coming in, dressing up, acting like one of you, so it ain't nowhere around it. really dead in my eyes, though, so now I'm doing something different. I'm, mm. I'm eight years out, I'm straight. Word, okay. Um, so share with the people your favorite memory of growing up in the 80s and the 90s. I don't really know too much about the 80s, but the 90s. Like by '96, mm. by '96, I think when I first got my car, my first car, and they had the Olympics here, and I think, oh, um, what year that uh, freak this though? I don't really know. I think I was a little bit too young to go, but I used to mm. see the traffic because mm. we used to be on Cleveland Avenue a lot, mm -hmm. and they had it all down from from Metropolitan. It's called Stewart Avenue from Metropolitan all the way downtown. Mm. So we just to ride and see it while I'm in the car. I'm just see it, but it's just like far being into it, like we never get to really get into it, but. Gotcha. That was some real memory right there, though. Where, yeah, I was I was too young, but my mom was there. Yeah, you know what I mean? Was. She brought back T-shirts and whatnot. But um, yeah. speaking about cars, though, I know you you know have an extensive car collection and you like vehicles and all that good stuff. So list your top favorite cars that you like and the cars that you own. Well, I like vintage cars, like um, mm -hmm. old school, like '67 and '55s. So I own a '68 um, Camaro Rally Sport, a '67 um, Nova SS. I all on like customs. I own '66 pickup. Like I got '72 I'm working on right now, and I um, got a ZL one like a little muscle car, a newer model. Like I just like really vintage old cars. Like they're my passion right there. Like stuff like that. They don't lose no value. You feel? Right. Got you. Um, now you work with a lot of producers, um, such as Zaytoven, Chill Go Hard, a lot of other guys as well. Um, which producer do you feel like pushes you the most? I don't give me support. I'm telling you, give me real support. Like Chill Go Hard, Tim mm -hmm. Man, Zilla Super, Neil Lante. Like them, them producers out there, they gonna keep me scrapped up. Um, Vay Cortez, you feel me? Like they gonna stay on. Like they gonna come through. You know what I'm saying? Where? No matter what, they gonna come through. Okay. That's what's up. Shout out Chilka Hart. Um, do you read? No, not really. Okay. Have you been keeping up with the politics and all that good yeah, stuff see, in Atlanta? Yeah, she's coming to my phone right now, so like seeing okay. the current events. So right. It's, it's just be small paragraph with like books and stuff. Like, nah, hell read of like 40 pound law, 50 pound law. Dope. I read stuff that I might be interested in. Okay. See what I'm saying? Like, so it's too much I'm being interested in. So when they come out with something new like that, yeah, I go grab it. Right. I've been trying to find the Gucci Man book, but I ain't found it yet. Though. You got to go on Amazon or Barnes oh, & Noble. You got to order it. Yeah, okay, that's what okay. I do. Yeah, see, I catch up. Okay, I check somebody like that, somebody I'm interested in. But right. like, like, most everything in there, like audio and video, you can just look at True. it. True. It take much time. True. Um, now, I saw you had on a couple of Cincinnati Reds hats in the past. You mm -hmm. know, I'm from Ohio, Cincinnati, Ohio, so can you tell me anything about Cincinnati? Yeah, I know a couple people from Lima, Ohio, um, Cincinnati. Okay. Um, where my other brother them from? They, um, my boy Optum from up that way. Mm. So, you know what I'm saying? That when I, I had no, I've been known about five, six years old, him and Joe. They got the, um, Blow Music Group, like, okay. in my home. So, yeah, I deal with a couple of them on some new stuff out that way. Dope, dope, yeah, dope. lime and assistant. You know Word. Um, now, speak about uh, drink. Do you drink? Yeah, I, drink. I sip every now and then. Every now and then. Okay, yeah, cool. 
So, you know what I mean, in light of all the, the recent situation that's been going on, man, with Fredo, what type of thoughts go through your head, you know what I mean, when you drink? Uh, I ain't, like I'm saying, I ain't indulging on that, and I'm, I ain't trying to say that to make it sound cool, because I drink. Like, I have my reason why I drink, but when you're dealing with a certain type of drug that you put inside your body, it's like you got to have a personal first person you're going to deal with on that. You can't just, oh, I want some drink, and I'm just going to get it. Who got drink and you just buy it from a certain person because right. it's like people playing a game with your life for some small at ten dollars. So like I never buy it from not a personal person or a different person. Just even mm -hmm. though I'm from a different state, I'm gonna figure out a way to make my way there if I had to have it that bad. But just you just gotta know who you getting something from, man. We put it in your body, bro. Can't just deal with no anybody. Like it's a fad when you just won't go with anybody unless you're looking at yourself as a junk. See a junk will get it from anybody because they ain't really mm -hmm. care about themselves. But it ain't that serious though. Like you can wait on your people who get it once a month, twice a month, and just you know what I mean. But like I said, I ain't just saying that make it look cool for a net person to do it. Like you, you ain't gotta do it. Don't don't do it. I don't do it to be cool. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um. So what makes a person a boss? Make a personal ball when you put all the people around them in position. Right. Like, a different position. Like, mm -hmm. you, in a way, you can help a person. Like, you got, some people feel like you got to make a person rich mm -hmm. to be a boss. That ain't true. You can put a person in position mm -hmm. to make them sell rich and be a boss at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's just all about putting people in position. Right, right. Got you. Uh, thoughts on rappers sharing? Like, what you mean by rappers sharing? Sharing, you know, like clothes, jewelry, just content, that type of stuff. I don't know. See, I can't believe a lot of stuff I read on the internet because I don't really be around on real rappers like that. Mm. To the point where, like, I deal with, like, a couple, I ain't going to say, like, them ones that probably sharing ain't real, but I deal with the kind that really got their own stamp. You know what I mean? Really, I already got something going on. So, okay. And like I say, we deal with bosses, everybody don't boss around me. And now we're going to put you on that platform mm -hmm. to you know, in your mind, I'm a boss. Whether mm -hmm. you have all the, the necessities or whatnot, in my mind, I'm a boss. So I'm going to think like a boss. So, you know, they we ain't thinking like, let me wear your sweater today. Right. Or, Give me your watch for this and that. Like, we ain't doing that. Okay. Like, if we do something like that, okay, that means, like, I got to watch and you got to watch and he got to watch. Okay, you can get it. But if he ain't got one and he just need to be like, nah, we ain't doing that. We'll try to figure out a way to get, help him get a watch. You get what I'm saying? Right. Like, we ain't going to do a deal like that. Cool. Um, so speak on your parents. Speak on what their relationship taught you. Yeah, my parents, both of them, one of them taught me don't take no job. And really, both of them told me that. Be a stand-up guy and, in, and everything that I'm going to do. You know what I'm saying? I got the hustle from my mom and my dad. You see what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, I didn't just, okay, I want to be a hustle. Then go on the street because I felt like it was cool. I really was born into it. You feel what I'm saying? So probably my environment. My dad with 27 uh, feet and sick conviction, I mean, with a pretty like sit over six different times. Mm -hmm. Probably like 20 some years off and on, so you know how that went. So my mom really had to just hold everything down, so work with y'all and hustle. You feel what I'm saying? But well, we made it though, you feel? She made sure we were straight, we were missing that. No shoes, no meals, no neck. Mm -hmm. That's on me. Word. Yeah. Um, speaking of shoes, uh, can you name your top three favorite shoes? Like the brand? Yeah, just the brands. The brand. Um, I like, um, well, I like Chris Lutens. I like, um, that's crazy. What well, I be like in the mobile world? I like, I got, well, every brand. It just depends on what it come out. I'm just going to okay. throw something out there. I'm going to say, like, those Sacred Bomber, mm -hmm. Chris Lutens, and, um, what I've been getting into lately. The, um, the Gucci. Okay. Gucci shoes, I've been liking that lately. Word. It's a lot on my job. You may, may name three, so I have to start right there. Right, right, right. Just need three simple. Um, so when you were a kid, when did you realize what a work ethic was, and what moment did you realize what it was, and what were you going um, through at that time? When we got up in the age, like by like 14, stuff like that, when, you know, like, as we were coming up, we, like when the joints was a big thing then mm -hmm. like it is now. Right, yeah. So it was way bigger when you was a kid because you know you got to go sure. to school, you want to have it. So mm -hmm. it was like, okay, this will let me know the streets and the job were real coke. Up in, when we got up in that age, they had no light chain. We used to get on the dime. I'm on like, you got to wait. I, I got to try to get paid and this and that mm -hmm. going on. So I'm like, 
All right, so we went, then you, it's, it's slowing up, everything's slowing up, so I'm like, I'm still being paced, because she wanted to go to school, we're gonna go to school, make mm -hmm. good grade, we never been throwing slow, so right. one day we were in seventh grade, so I just heard a boom on the phone, the um, tab for a kid to go down. So, you know what I'm saying, they ran upstairs, tried to go grab the shit, they got my mom locked up, I mm -hmm. seen the crying shit, so I like, you know what, after that day four, I like, she ain't doing it no more. About two years that we moved, she got a house out there in the suburb. We was great. Word. And I took her off from there. I can see that. My dad, you know, you see daddy, I see him go to jail on the radio. So it was like, did with your mom. You like, hold up. Yeah, yeah. I got to step up. I already know the game. I've been, I've been around my whole life. So they like, this is the shit that I got. This is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, one thing or one principle that your kids have taught you? My kids? Mm hmm. But they stand on loyalty Just, and principles. They stand on loyalty. They respect. Okay. You know what I'm saying? They love. They different talking that. Hmm. Because if it weren't for the kids, I'd be a different person. Before I had kids, I was a different person. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? So they kind of like slow you down and make you respect. They look at everything different. Because they're probably just on go like whatever. Hmm. <laughs> gotcha. Um, what's your favorite Boosie song and favorite Kevin Gates song and why? Boost Kevin Gates song Tired. Mm. I like that. And I like another one. Um, a lot of people probably won't know it though. It's called um, Fucking With You. I might have heard it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, Boost the song. That um, Independent. Okay. Yeah, that was, <laughs> I got more. I got like real song, but I got a name song that. The mainstream. Yeah, they'll really know about it. Right, I right. got some hard stuff that they probably want to listen to because they'll hit on the radio. For sure. See, I really listen to the music, so I, I know the real song. Likewise, yeah. I fuck with Boosie too. Yeah. Um, speaking on why it's important to know your history. You gotta know your history, like, for us, like, where from Atlanta history, or just for us, part of black history, period. Just, just period. You know, I think it's important to know both, but just speak on why it's important to know. Between, I'm gonna tell you what the air I brought up in, like, on your history, we brought up in, like, when they started teaching us in school what the love and hate part, the white and black part, so, mm. basically, it's still going on. That's important. You need to know that's still going on in some states, such as Mississippi and et cetera. Because you see little boosters that went through that same thing. Right. I got a couple homeboys I really lived out. Like they said it really going down like that mm -hmm. in the woods. So you just got to keep in your mind that that um, that hatred, that slavery, it's, it's, it's not a bias. It's just modern day now. They do it in different ways. Like, mm -hmm. like they, they do it with the way they pay you as they work with the minimum wage. Then they do it with the prison system because you don't get paid nothing. And they just work you all day and they feed you like, you know, it's, it's just modern day slavery now. So it still exists, so don't never get in your head and feel like, okay, then everything equal now. I don't know if it'll never get to that point. You hmm. know what I'm saying? I just, that ain't, you know, I can't speak on such things. They get scared. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, speak about the misconceptions about Atlanta and the people and the, and the artists that it produces. What do you mean, misconceptions? Just speak on any misconception that you may think of, like when people think of Atlanta. Um, oh no, nah, like yeah, I understand what you're saying. Now, far as like their physical appearance, mm -hmm. like some people get that twisted. Like I can say that because I was young know, when we first jumped out of the port. So, mm -hmm. and the way we're carrying itself, some people think it was feminine, but mm -hmm. it ain't like that over there. And I ain't just saying that because I'm from Zone Three. Like it ain't like that. And as you can see, once. He started doing it. A lot of other people felt like it was okay to do it. At first, they didn't have the ball to do it. They were mm -hmm. like, I don't know. So he took a chance and went out there. So now you see a whole, really, most of the, all the younger generation now is following his twin trend as far True. as the dress code. Right. You feel what I'm saying? At first, they were big clothes. This now, all that was against it. Mm -hmm. So now everybody with a tight plan. They wear the women blouses, you know, different colors. You know what I'm saying? Like, so. Yeah. But don't get that twisted with their fashion. Like, on my end, mm -hmm. like, I can't speak from where going past Turner Field mm -hmm. and up the Peach Street. But from Turner Field, Zone 3 Old National, Simpson Road, Cleveland Avenue, John Boy Road, they ain't rocking like that. Where I, um, I met the, you know, before in the past, and he right. was a cool guy, real solid, so I don't have anything bad to say yeah, about that. That's just how he worked that movie, and I it got him in position. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now um, everybody was like, damn, I should have did that. I won't true. think about it. Right. You had the ball to do it. You know that's what I'm saying? Like a Harvard student. It just finessed it way up. It worked. Hmm. 
Um, so speak about the role of a DJ. Why are they important to an artist's career? Um, because without a DJ, you won't be able to get your music spent in the club. And for some reason, they feel like you're not hiding until your record getting played in the clubs. Mm. That's how they look at it. Mm -hmm. like, you can be an A-list artist, but if you're not blazing in certain clubs in Atlanta and certain clubs on the outskirts, now important, so you can't go and play your own music at the club, so you gotta go through the DJ. Mm -hmm. And then you gotta have a decent sound, cause just cause you take That's a more record and a few dollars don't mean, cause it's just like a, a hustle. If you give me some money, mm -hmm. and I'm like, they probably don't mean I'm say, you got a few, um, right. they gonna get that, they got bill to pay, so it's like, shit, yeah, it's my jewel, get my own. You know, then another thing, you got a couple of DJs that done stood by a couple of artists, put them in position, and then charge them no money like they tried to charge me, and then when they got in position, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You feel me? So at the end of the day, but they are very important to the game, though. Mm -hmm. like, for real, for real. The ones who do, they supposed to do. <laughs> right. Uh, speak on your relationship with Rick Ross. Rick Ross is a big homie. I met him, you know what I'm saying? I have a rock with me, school that uh, Future had a few years back. Really the first rock I ever did, caught out my mind. It was produced by my boy Faith over there on that record. So mm. I got with them, we made the record. We just playing around with it, putting it in different clubs, because we going out every night. We kind of playing with buying bottles, we cleaned up, we throwing money. So now we got a reason, we got a song to count. So now we promote, we kind of paying it for a reason. By virtue going out every night buying bottles, kicking it in, just leave, like fuck it, we just hit the club. So now we get a record out. Every club we went into, they start playing it from here to Clayton County, like all the clubs, Nightlight, Libra, um, Chit Chat. It was, um, City like before the club, the core, the um, crucial, like all the clubs. Everybody started playing, so I started catching. So I started getting a lot of promotion for the record and everything. So we still ain't never shoot a video to this song. So some kind of way it got Rick Ross' attention. We had a show at the Lever on the Tuesday. And somebody was like, hey, Ross outside, you want to holler at you? Mm. So I'm like, shit, just tell me from the perform, come in. So he came in the club. You know what I mean? He had the, um, uh, who we had, we had gunplay with him, mm, okay. a couple more to um, do, whole slab with him, I think another guy with him, so the Triple C was out, that one he promoted that album, mm -hmm. so they did a couple songs, we did the song, and ever since then we've been linked up, like, going to the crib, we ended up doing some business, we got, we ended up signed to him like 2012, on some stuff, you feel what I'm saying, but other than that, we still kick it, we got a good relationship, we're not saying, you know what I mean, they call my push up, how mm -hmm. them, you know what I mean. Gotcha. All right. Another thing I noticed too, you had a, a relationship with Bankroll Fresh. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I, he was one of the first people that really gave me a chance as far right. as pulling out the camera and whatnot. Um, so talk about your relationship with Bankroll. Bankroll like my little brother though. Like, I think Bankroll about fourteen years old. Him and Montana um had a little group together. They were they, on um, Get Rich Click. And so they dad had stepped to him one time because it wasn't stuff going on. He needed me to step up and um, take him to the studio and make sure they had the music stuff going on because he had to go do something else for about like a couple months or something. So I just stepped in and I started taking a relationship with him because we were hanging out and shit. I was like, man, these little niggas look faster than what they supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So they called me and they big bro, big bro. So I'm picking them up. They hanging out with me. We're going to my house. We're going to Ross' house, like taking the studio. We're just doing everything. They just with me every day. And so then he got up, well, he got about 16. Then he started hanging in the tent. So he started making a little plays in the street. So he comes on like, this little nigga here, yeah, but he always been by that hustle. Mm -hmm. But he always been by that music too. Like, he always like Gucci. You go all that old music he been around. Like, oh, yeah. Everybody love him. Yo, got it. He just one of them guys. Like, he just, but at the time when the music started switching up in Atlanta, he kind of got frustrated. Like, I ain't doing either that bubble guns. This shit ain't real, this ain't how Atlanta set up. He, the coach just had me reflect on that. Cause he like, they making no little bad, bro. Mm. They think a nigga on that booth, that sucker shit. Like, nah, I'm like, nah, man, they be cool, real nigga. She gonna come back through, just keep grinding. Mm -hmm. So he started grinding, grinding some more. He caught a little rap, you know what I'm saying? Then, you know, daddy, K. Rich always mm. been behind him. Like, he been in the music game and said, well, far. So I had pay work, man, him did some business. So I'm on set, well, far. They were for the street money. Mm -hmm. So, but like we say, we all want each other to be their own boss. So, mm -hmm. he always gonna be okay. This your dad, this your big bro. Mm -hmm. But you wanna go start your own come street money. He started street money, and we didn't never get behind. Be like, hey, freak, no, you probably should be saying this, should be saying that. No, nah, you your own boss. Go out your own brand. Be your own brand. You feel what I'm saying? We don't handle nobody in no good situation. You feel?
feel? It's all love at the end of the day. You feel? True. It's a real, a real situation. Though. Have you got a chance to see a son since? Yeah. I seen that. I was just over there at the um, uh, what the last thing was that little Thanksgiving. Mm, Thanksgiving word. that was like about a month ago. PJ, I was over there talking to him. Word. I was sitting down with his dad like two, or three times. Seeing him, mom, I keep in touch with who I need to keep in touch with. For sure. You know what I'm mm -hmm. All right. Um. So lastly, just speak about the future of Block One Two Five and and what's what's coming up for you, man. You know what I mean. When I was doing my research, I was really impressed. I liked everything right. that I learned and heard about you real solid so I really hope that you know you continue to elevate but what's next for you? What what's next? We got you? um we got a we got a beef this single up with um me and Lotto Savage that dope mm -hmm. by top. Then we gotta drop the following record. Then we come from next month with another project called Thirty Six Times Two Men Lotto Savage. You know what I'm saying? We got some good producers on there. We got um Southside eight oh eight, Chilla Soup, we're gonna have um Neo Lante on now. Um Timmy Hitman, Day the King. We got we're gonna have some nice little hitters on now. We just work putting the same energy into the mirror we put into the streets. Got um dope butt top video going be it with World Star and on their YouTube page. Trying to get Vivo. Then we're gonna come more video, Big Bank Black, Joe Green, Kibo Guy the Kurt Bo. You know what I mean? Time and gone. We work, we just trying to match up the vision with the music right now. So we can put it in your in your car and on your T V, on your cell phone, wherever you at, we we trying to be there. And so, you know what I'm saying? We need y'all to go to iTunes Music, Spotify, TuneCore, all that, Live Mixtape, Spin Real, Traps and Trump, every major platform we have, have a brick out right now. Go support the movement, dope, boy.